Welcome to the Rebel Systems Products Overview Demo. Today we're going to go over how to create a menu through the products area, what this all means, and what it all does. I'm going to give you a brief overview. If you actually want to create a menu and go into in-depth, I advise you going to the video, How to Create a Menu. Okay? Now, we're going to go through this real quick. The products allow you to search for products and add to them if you wish. You will notice that there's multiple ways you can get the products. You can use the categories. You can go to your subcategories, and then you get all the products in the down screen. Looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Or you can search for the product in the search bar. You'll notice as I start typing, it'll automatically put the ones that I want. If I want to search for, let's say, pistachios, there it is. Boom, I click on it. And then what happens here is it immediately goes to the advanced screen. The advanced screen will go over all of the different things that you can do to that product. I can put it in multiple categories, which is really convenient because you can build a menu and have it in the same one category and also add it to another category so it shows up in two places. But for inventory purposes, it's still the same item, which is really nice because you can put it in multiple areas. The name, the description of the product, of course, the cost, the price. What is maximum price? Maximum price is the maximum amount for that item. What that means is it allows you to put as many modifiers as you want, but it's not going to charge you over that dollar amount ever which is nice. Uh, a really key feature, I'm not going to go over all these, you have to look at the other videos, but kitchen print name, this allows you to print the kitchen different than the actual name of the product. Why is this really awesome? Because a lot of the kitchen staff speak another language, right? So if the employee sees pistachio on the point of sale, the kit the, in the back in the kitchen, they can put whatever language they want, and boom, now there's no more conflict and, and misunderstandings in the kitchen. That will print to the KDS screen or even to the printer in a different language, which is really nice. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the products and go to that menu the same way we found it in categories so we can make sense of it. Snacks, nuts, and there is pistachio. So you can go here, click the advanced tab, and that's how you get to the same screen as the search bar. It's a whole lot easier using the search if you know the product you need to go to because it pulls it right into the advanced tab. Now, if you don't want to use the events tab, you don't have to. You can use the category drop downs and then be on the products, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheet view. You have the name, you have the cost. Always fill in the cost because this really helps you run your business if you fill out the features that you need. Fill in the price, of course, that you're going to charge for the product. Is it active or not active? Now, we don't delete anything because of reporting purposes. If you delete something, that will cause reporting uh, to go bad, right? So if anyone asks you, why, am I, why can't I delete anything? Well, you don't want to delete it because you're going to hurt your reporting if you do, right? You can deactivate it so you don't see it anymore. If I say no, it's gone. You don't see it, right? But for reporting purposes, you still need it there. Now, if you make a mistake and, and accidentally take it off of active, you can say, you know what, show me both and bring it back. So not only is it really convenient that you can't delete it so you don't ruin your reports, but you can actually bring it back also. Okay, now the last column here is your sort column. This allows you to sort the items in the order you wish to see. I tend to go in tens. Why? Because that way, when I'm sorting, I can actually stick something in between without having to renumber all of my, all of my columns. Now notice you have a save button. You can sometimes get away with saving all three really fast, but otherwise you do have to do one row at a time or else it will reset. But anyway, you do 10, 20, 30. Now the next one, I, I add an item. I can say, you know what? I actually want this in between the trail mix and the almonds, so I'm going to make it 11, right? Or even 12 to put, allow me to do something else later on. Um, so I always like to go in tens just so I have room and I don't have to renumber all of my items later on if I want to put something in between. Now, hopefully, coming, going forward, we'll be able to do this automatically, but right now it is what it is. Think ahead and, and do it by tens. Makes it really easy for you, okay? All right, product groups that deals with advanced um, discounts. We're not going to go into that because that's all changing right now. Categories, really simple. Okay, what is a category? Category is the same thing that you saw in your menu, right? So for your menu, you have snacks, drinks, frozen food, RX produce, household. I click on one of them, and then the subcategory crop plus up, candy chips and nuts. So if I go back to categories and I want to add a category, you'll see the categories here. I click on the arrow and I see the subcategories. Why is this important for me? It's really important because you're building a menu and this is what makes the POS great or the POS sucks, okay? Because the less clicks that you give to that client, the better off you're gonna be. Now go into the advanced menu building videos and you'll see 
what the differences are in the menu and why you need to do it certain ways because you will get less clicks and the clients will be a whole lot happier if you have less clicks. But just know you have to have at least one top category and then you can have as many subcategories as you wish. There's Sometimes you only want one top category because the menu will actually skip it and just show you the subcategory so it's only one click. But sometimes you need two levels because you have lots of categories. Right? This client has one, two, three, four, five, six. I'd say you wouldn't need two levels for six categories. You can get away with just putting all the subcategories underneath one category so it skips the first category and just shows you all the subcategories on the iPad. There's pluses and minuses to both ways. You just have to figure what's best for the client and what's less clicks for the client. What are classes? Classes deal with the reports. So you're going to create all your classes, the kind of category wise, and you're going to assign the class to a product. Now, what does that mean? That means your categories are not reported on by these categories. They're reported on by classes. So if I go into my product mix, I will actually see, well, if I had products in here, I would actually, let's go to somewhere that actually has something so you can see it. So if I go to my product mix, you'll actually see the product classes on the left here, right? So each item, has the class as beverage for anything under beverage and it all wraps up into the category we call class okay so there are your classes that's that's the main difference okay so everyone understand, i hope um you have a sort column for your classes doesn't really make a whole amount of difference the sorting order you can go to the advanced settings of the classes you will notice you have an activate button if it's a parent to another class and sorting. Okay. Discounts. Discounts are really interesting because there's a lot of options with our discounts. So you gotta know what they are. Okay, you put a name in for the discount, the amount or the percentage. Okay, you put in the amount column or the percentage column, depending on which option. Maximum off. So if you do a percentage, you can say, you know what, I want to give ten dollars is the maximum I want off for the percentage or whatever I say. So if I do fifty percent off, I don't want to do it more than ten dollars worth. Of 50%. Okay, minimum amount. That means the purchase has to be at least five dollars before this discount applies. Okay, is it taxed or not taxed? Pretty simple. Password protected or not? That means it'll prompt for a password if they try to use this uh, discount option. Brand level. This pushes it out to all locations if I select it off, which is really nice. Now let's go to the event settings of a discount. In the discount advanced area, I can give a from date and a to date to activate the discount and it'll cease to work if it goes past the effective to date. I can assign it to a product, right? So if I want to assign it to a product, I can just pick the product to assign it to. Now it only works on that one item. Of course, you have the name from the last screen. These are all fields from the last screen. Um, is it active or not active? Discount code. Can I make this coupon work, this discount work from a code? If I select it, I then have to import my discount codes. I can make it a one-time use code or a multi-use code. What does that mean? That means if you look at a lot of the Groupon deals, people print out deals, they go and they get redeem that deal, and then they go to another location and redeem the same deal, and then they just got two of your product for one price. How can you stop that? You can stop that by using one-time use codes. You program all of your Groupon deals into the Excel spreadsheet. You upload it, so if they use it, it won't be allowed to use at any of their other locations automatically. So you never have to worry about people trying to rip you off, which is really great. And we also have multi-use codes. So if you want to distribute a coupon in a Daily Sunday uh, newspaper, you can go ahead and, and put a multi-use coupon in there, and it will always work as many times as you have it active. Okay? Uh, we went over the brand, what that means if you check it off, it automatically goes to all locations. The volume and the volume product, that goes into other things that we won't go over right now because that feature is not entirely done. Um, I am in a demo version of our backend, so we see extra features that aren't ready yet. Uh, discount levels, that goes into discounting at users um, levels, so that you can attach a level to a user in the CRM. Uh, this is events discounting. We'll go into that a little bit later. But just know that you can add a user to an order and automatically apply the discount that you set in the discount levels area, which is really nice. Okay. Taxes. Very simply, you can 
create multiple taxes and attach them to products. So I can have a different tax rate on every single product if I wish. And now in the new release, I can have multiple taxes on a single product and overall. Ingredients. This is where if you're going to use ingredient control for inventory purposes, I have to add all my ingredients in here. What is the cost of that ingredient and what is the unit type of that for that cost? So every single case is $10. Right? And what's going to happen is after you create all your ingredients, you attach the ingredient to the product and you say how many units of that ingredient. So if this is $10 a bottle and I say I'm, I'm using 10 of them for a case, that's how all the mathematics works. Uh, tonic water is by ounce, so it's 50 cents. So I use two ounces of tonic water per drink, so I just use a dollar was worth of the tonic water because I use two of them. So two ounces, so I times that by 50 cents and I get a dollar. Um, so that's the way ingredients are. So you have to fill in all your ingredients and then attach the ingredients to each product recipe. You don't have to use ingredients if you don't wish. It's just another form of letting you know how you're doing in your shop as far as expenses are concerned. Now, extras is really important. Extras will actually generate a barcode or SKU automatically in all your products. Why do you want to do this? This next thing here is import-export. If you want to import or export your products, you don't want to duplicate them. We use the barcode or the SKU column as the lock feature. So if you auto barcode all your products, it'll tell you only one was left without a barcode. It just barcoded it for me. It tells me what it was. Okay, I can also do SKU. If I want to auto SKU my products for whatever reason, I can SKU them. It tells me 19 products have been updated with a nice SKU. Um, this is great so you don't have duplicate items when you import the same list twice. Now, if I go on the import, I can choose to import products, modifiers, or ingredients. So you can make an Excel spreadsheet and import them very easily. Let's go over products. Products have a basic, advanced, and empty template mode. If I export, I can export the basic features, which are the name, the price, the cost, uh, the barcode, the things that you need. Now, you can also select other columns that you might want. What does that mean? That means it'll show you a list of items you may want to export. So if I want a kiosk, I can say, you know what, I can choose which items in my menu I actually display on a kiosk and which ones I don't. Same thing goes for online ordering, right? Display online ordering for this item. So you can actually just type things in or you can just see a list of all the things that you can include in this uh, export, which is really nice. If you do basic, it doesn't give you an opportunity to add fields. It's just the basic cost, price, barcode, item. Really neat for, for, for retail. Export only live items. So if you have any disabled items, you don't want to see them in the export, just select that and it only shows you the live items. Now, this is really great because if you forget to do the extras barcoding, it'll automatically barcode your items for you when you export so you don't duplicate on the import process. So down here, you just import the Excel spreadsheet when it's done, and now you put a name in for the, the email address where you got to get the report after it's been imported and tells you what was done. You click import and you're done. Very simple. So that is the products overview tab. Any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a mail or go to ask.revelsystems.com where you can find all the updated questions that people ask and you can find the answers to those questions all on ask.revelsystems.com. It's our go-to place for any questions and answers you may have. Thanks a lot and have a great day.